Sergio Aguero also scored his first goal in a year from the, the penalty spot. Um, but there does seem to be a narrative building that his time at City is drawing to a close. You can see just how special a player he's been, not just for City, but for the entire Premier League. Only Thierry is, uh, has fared better in Premier League history in terms of goal involvements when we break it down to minutes per goal and assist. Is right up there. We haven't doctored that, Thierry, by the way. You are just in front. It might be a few seconds, but you're still in front. Don't worry. You guys know what's coming. <laughs> but you would accept, Thierry, that, that City might be on the lookout for a, a number nine. And I, I think it's fair to say that it's the same for several of our big clubs in the Premier League right now. So who could they target this summer, potentially? Well, these are the top scorers across Europe's five major leagues right now. We should make the point that, that some of these are unattainable and quite a few of them are over 30 as well. But maybe two stand out here. Under 23, performing at the very highest level. Kylian Mbappe, just 22 years old. Erling Haaland, at just 20 years old. If you're in Manchester City's position or Manchester United or Liverpool or Chelsea right now, who would you be in investing in to build your team around? All of them? <laughs> no, no, seriously. First and foremost, there's something very important on that, on, on, on that is that you have the age and some players are already at the big club and comfortable there. So to, to attract them might be also difficult, let's all be honest. There's not that many you can see moving. Exactly. There? And so the two that you mentioned, it will be difficult to, to move uh, Mbappe from Paris Saint-Germain, but maybe Haaland can be Lukaku. I know he's about, I don't want to jinx him also for them, maybe to, to win the league. Uh, but he's young. The others, I'm not saying they're finished, far from that. But you would like to maybe bring someone young that can give you maybe seven to eight years. Like a puppy? Uh, Alan, yeah. <laughs> <Bobby Allen. laughs> well, let's yeah, do the one by yeah. one then. Oh, so I just wonder if there's a little link, not exactly the same, but I've said you're very similar to, to Mbappe, where he, he'll come wide, he creates things, he scores goals. Is Haaland very similar to a striker who you were maybe battling with for the Golden Boot? Ruud van Nistelrooy, it was just goals. That's all he thought about, not going out wide, not getting involved. Yes. Is that what you see? Yes, him, the likes of... Not so much in, in, in how they play so much, but the, the desire that they have. They want to kill. They want to be in the box. They're looking at the defender, you won't be able to live with me. I'm waiting for those crosses. I can see that sometimes when the midfielder doesn't give him the ball, that, that look that you give your midfielder or, or, or the defender, like, hey, are you going to give me the ball? Mm. I've had enough, I want to score now. I want to be the guy that's going to make the team win. I can see that with him. It's, I mean, we're going to look at the actual stats of them in the Champions League because, to be fair, they play in different leagues for different strength of team, if you like, PSG, the standout team in France. But you think of the top competition now in world football and it's the Champions League. They both made it through to the quarter-final. So you look at how many games they've played at the top there and Haaland's record, I mean, 20 goals in 14 games is off the scale. But I think what we do see in those first two or three categories is the fact the assist Mbappé gets. So if you put the assists with the goals with Mbappé, it, it's a goal a game, or he's involved in a goal a game, which is just short of Haaland. But then you actually look at the stats underneath. Shots very similar, you know, expected goals, and the chances they get. I mean, the shot conversion, I mean, it's just off the scale from this but, guy. I here, mean, 19 Harland. is good, isn't it? It's I mean, yes. Force, ridiculous. I mean, that's, I mean, whether he can continue that, but that is just... But, but again, you look at chances created. So, I mean, those stats alone tell us, Thierry, the differences if you bought one of those players, what you were going to get. You have it right there. You have a guy that thinks about goals. 14 games, 20 goals. The other one is all around. 42 games, but because he moves around, obviously he's not in the box that often because he creates for others. And then you have that with the assist. And in the short conversion, you can see that the other one, if he has one chance or two, it's in the back of the net. Mbappé might take a bit more, but he moves a bit more. So sometimes he might be tied at the end of some finishing because he moves a lot. But this is what you're getting. Two amazing strikers that can do different things. Who do you enjoy watching the most? I, I like a killer. So Mbappé kills you a different way. And Alan gives you a different, kills you a different Listen, way. They're different. Thierry's been here since four o'clock and we haven't got him to say Mbappe or Harley <laughs> once, so he's not going to do it on TV. <laughs> a, be a better way of asking, I think these are the two strikers that everyone in Europe, or certainly the Premier League, are looking at. Who do you actually think suits what team? So who would suit a Pep Guardiola team more, Mbappe or Haaland or Manchester United, Liverpool, Chelsea? It's a tough one. Uh, it's a tough one because Mbappé gives you something different. Listen, we, we talked about it before, off-air, 
And it's not me trying to get out of it, but uh, 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 Owen needed Eski like Eski needed Owen. Uh, it, if, you know, they're different type of player. You know, you can compare maybe Mbappe to another guy that likes to move and, and, and be different. Is he going to put pressure like Pep likes to put pressure? Is Alan going to put pressure like Pep likes to put pressure? But he might give you something else. He might learn or not learn. I just think that at one point, those two guys, when I see them play, they know what they're not good at. So that's why you see more often than not Mbappe going on the wing and Alan staying in because they know what their strengths are. You know Pep better than anyone. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Aguero's time's maybe coming to an end. Is he, not exactly the same, but is he almost similar to Aguero, where it's, it's just about the goal, doesn't get involved in free play or maybe assists as much, Harland? Do you think he could just slot straight into there for Man City? I think that Pep has the capacity to make anyone adapt to however he wants to play, especially if he gets a guy young that can understand what he wants. Sometimes when you get a guy that's 30, 31, or that's been playing for a long time, a certain way, it's very difficult to change him. You know that. It's very difficult. But if you get a guy, you get a guy early and he understands also, very important, that he can win playing a certain way, that he can be successful playing a certain way. It's very important when a player feels that. And we're talking about a guy, about a guy sorry, that I think that can adapt. But I think you, you can never be too sure because, look, um, Aguero, sometimes, not only this year, and we're talking about one of the best players ever in this league and I admire, admire him so much. But quite often, Pep left him out in some big games for whatever reason that you need to ask Pep. But not only this year, and so many times he left him, he left him out. I remember a game that uh, we did, guys, when it was snowing at Old Trafford, when they put him on the bench and they won 2-0 still without him, with, with playing that box inside and the two, the two strikers out on the outside. So Pep has a certain view of how he likes his team to play. And at times, if you're not going to fit into that, it's always going to be the team first. Can those guys adapt to that? Of course they can adapt to that. I remember that day because you were, you were late, I think. Um... Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Bamiyang. Oh, okay, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I, still, I still met the squad. <laughs> you did, you did. I, I, put, I wanted to ask you your thoughts on if you were, if you were advising Haaland right now because it, it does seem like everybody in world football is talking about him and would love him to, to sign for them and he's maybe got a big decision to make over the next year or two. What would your advice be to him? Perhaps not in terms of which club he should go to, but how he should plot his career from here. As someone who had a long spell at Arsenal, reached the very top as an individual, and then went on and, and won everything at, at Barcelona. First and foremost, the man, you know, I think of people that looks after him, so I don't have to tell him anything in terms of what he needs to do in his career. But right now he's on the top of his game already, at his age. I think that this guy can go anywhere and make things happen for anybody. Now it's him to pick and choose, and I think that he has the quality to make it happen. So it's not a matter for me of, can I play there? Can I, am I going to suit the... No. You're going to have, obviously, at one point to understand what the team needs, understand what the fans are like or a club is. But at one point also, that guy, I mean, 14 goals, 14 games, 20 goals. What, what is this? It's, it's just not normal. What I like, you know, with him is... He's so big and strong. I'm looking at him, I'm like, oh, I wouldn't like to be a defender because he, he wants <laughs> to... me. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but seriously, you know, and you, I'm happy to see those guys coming. You know why? Because they're, they're real strikers. They want to go in behind. They want to hurt you. You know, Jamie will tell you there's nothing worse when a guy looks at you and goes in behind again and again and again and again. And those guys have that mentality. It's nice to see. So, Jamie, you, you're Liverpool owner for a day and you've got Ooh. loads of money. Who are you taking, Mbappe or Haaland? I mean, I've watched the clips today and I've always gone with Mbappe before, but there's something about Haaland. He just, he looks mad, but in a good way. <laughs> you know where you just think he doesn't care about anything? You see the celebration in the Champions League with the goalkeeper? I, oh, I like that. It. I loved it. Oh, I like that. I like it. Oh. You like it? What? Oh, no. <laughs> I liked it. No, it's part of the game. It's part of the game. I'd go for Haaland. It's part of the game, Dave. It's part of the game. It's nice to see some characters. The, 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 the goalkeeper gave him some. OK, but oh, they have to be retaken. Be careful. So the, uh, you're, the Ars, you're the Arsenal owner for a day? No, 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 no. Listen, I can't go against my, my, my <laughs> fellow countrymen. countrymen. But they're different. You have to understand that they're different. You know, if, I, if I'm Man City... But Man City, you said Arsenal. 
I think Man- <laughs> if, you're, if you're Man City, go on. I think Man City should go for Haaland. Do you agree? If I'm Man City, I go for both because. You would like, I would like to think that they might, they might handle that. No, no, seriously, for me, it's very difficult to choose, not because I want to step out of that. I think the different strikers. <laughs> and, and what happened to playing with two? What about having the two? I know I'm, it sounds crazy, but it is where it is. <laughs> it costs a lot of money. 